Hello, gang. <laughs> Hello, gang. Did you hear it clink on my glass? Hello. Hello, gang friends. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. Let's do some nail stuff. <laughs> Okay, be serious for a second, will you? This is your job. <laughs> we have some stuff today from Madame Glam New, New York. Um, not some stuff, just, just the one thing. We have this pressed pigment shh, palette. Um, this is their third one. I haven't got the first two. Um, it's got instructions on the back of how to use it. It says to do it onto a cured velvet top coat. I'm not going to do it that way because I'm naughty. Sometimes you've got to be a little bit naughty. So that's what we're going to use today. Oh, and look at these. I've also got, um, I've been sent some, a whole bunch of crystals from Crystal Parade. We're going to have a look at them. They are divine. Oh, would you just stop? Look, look at the purple and pink ones and the topaz ones. I can confirm after the last video, topaz is gold or you can get blue topaz. Um, I'm going to call them Topaz. So I'm just showing you the names of the mixes. This one we're going to use today. Oh my coconuts and bananas. <laughs> They're so nice. The, the, the orangey and the orangey red. They're so sparkly. I absolutely adore the crystals from here. They're the sparkliest things I've ever seen. Um so these are them and you can use there's discount codes for everywhere i don't feel like i harp on a lot about this but you know it's money off for you so hopefully you don't mind you can get money off at man of glam and you can get money off at crystal parade look at these these are my new obsession to go in stars which is what we're going to do today these ones you need them in your life i think there's three sizes in there they are amazing i'm obsessed with them um, and then these Christmas ones, we have a snowman, we have a snowflake, look at that little tree, oh, adorable. Um, I think if I use these, I might have to blue tack them on so I can use them in other videos because they're just too nice to only have, have one of. Um, yes, you can get money off using the links in the description and the codes that are also in the description. So head over there to save money when you buy from nail stuff places like Madame Glam and Crystal Parade. Okay. Uh, what colour is this? Bear with, need a sip. Yeah. This is Dreamer from Madame Clam. I've done two coats and I've and I've cured it. Look, it's Friday, okay? I'm halfway between tipsy and drunk, so you're just gonna have to um bear with me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We've done two coats of the Dreamer. We've wiped and lightly buffed, and then we're taking perfect white. And we're going to do a line down the center and then but not all the way not all the way and then we're going to do a french so we're doing half a french um, and then we're going to fill that in and then we're going to cure and i do do two coats only because i went to put the pigments on this coat um, and then did something and just it up so had to wipe it off and then I needed a tacky layer again so I did a second coat of the white so we're going to cure this and then we're going to take the this one the orangey one and then we'll refer to this as yellow and we'll refer to this as cream for the rest of the video and this brush brush um, which I'll show you more about in another video so we're going to pick up some of the pigment and we're going to just brush it on so we're going to do an ombre. This is the easiest ombre you will ever do in your whole life and quickest. So I've got some pigment on there. I'm patting it and brushing it um, just on a third of it. And then I'm sort of tapping off the excess from my brush and then just lightly brushing down the excess that's on the nail. And then I'm taking the yellow and I'm going to go over the bottom part of the orange and then rub that in and then brush that down again. And then, oh, just adding a bit more there. So where we brushed down the orange, any gaps that there were, we've now got the yellow in. 
and then I've got another one of these brushes because they came in a pack of five and I'm doing the cream at the bottom and we'll do the same we'll go over where we've wisped down the yellow so that any gaps that the wispy down bit didn't have yellow on now has the cream on and above that any bits that didn't have the orange on now has the yellow on so then I'm going to wipe up oh, that up managed to dust over it a bit I think um, wipe away any that's on the um, background and then we're going to outline the French I should have and I do it later on in the video matte topped at this point because I hadn't topped the pigment area so this was a really hairy moment for me <laughs> you know hairy scary because if I messed up, I'd have to wipe it and then I'd wipe off the pigment and I'd have to start again. So I was being very careful. Um, although not doing the best job of being careful. The second I knew that I couldn't wipe and redo, I became absolutely shit at doing straight lines. Um, so just, yeah, they're not the best, but they'll, they'll do. So we're going to do a line from the top to meet our French. And then we're going to do a couple of lines in over the ombre. Ombre! Again, this is straight onto the ombre. Should have topped it um, because they're not the best straight lines and I couldn't redo them. This nail, and we're going to do two of this nail. We're going to do one the opposite side, so the same but opposite, um, is inspired by a Votino set. Um, and then... After doing this one first, I just kind of waited for some inspiration to come. So we've cured those. I'm curing as I go. And then we're going to do a straight line where the French starts. And then two diagonal lines in our... Um, there, in those bits. <laughs> and then we're going to... I think I cure this as well, just in case I mess up. And then we're going to do little U shapes between all the V's that we now have. These big sort of V shape sections. And then we want the high point of those U shapes to be in the center of the V. And then we'll do that all the way around. Oh, there's nothing more sobering than having to talk about what you're doing. It's, I'm, you know, I need another sip. Okay. Um, how is everybody? You all okay? <laughs> I hope you're all having a nice day. Um, I do, after using these pigments to do an ombre, which I don't know if I've ever done an ombre with pigments before. Oh my goodness, so much easier and quicker than gel polish ombres. Um, although it does come with the, you know, can't wipe any bits and redo side of things, but there didn't seem to be really any issues with it. Um, oh, apart from... So I'm matte topping now. I cured the spider web. I'm matte topping. As I went to put the nail in the lamp, dropped it. So you see that's the ombre. It's got a bit of a pearly, can you see the kind of pearly sheen to it? That's going to change in a minute because I dropped it as I went to put it in the lamp. And where the um, the pigments hadn't been topped until that wet matte top coat, it smudged them so I had to use my brush to try and rectify so it doesn't look as neat now but I've taken the m -m 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 -cart rhinestone glue and these crystals so I've got those silvery ones and then some from the pumpkin um set uh pack and we're going to put them on all the join marks of the cobweb and holy moly is that not beautiful oh i love it those orange ones are so orange they look like they're on fire and the silver ones i love them see i use the mccart gem glue rhinestone glue it's called um you can get money off that as well if you don't have it you need it it's amazing uh so that's the first one the second one we have done two coats of the dreamer again and we have wiped and lightly buffed and we're going to do a very deep French. Um, and I'm using the detail brushes to do the smile line and get the side bits in. And then I'll use the bottle bottle brush 
to fill this in and then we're going to cure it and we're going to ombre using those pigments again on this uh, French area and sometimes sometimes not often I look at things I've done and I think that looks really neat and I feel like that French looks really neat um, a little of surprise myself a little bit so we're taking the orange pigment we're going to pat it um, and sort of burnish it in and then as we get to where we want it to end just adding a little bit more there we're going to lightly stroke downwards here just little strokes now very light because you want there to be sort of gaps in your strokes so that the next color this color will fill in some of those gaps that's how we're going to get a blend um, so we're going over the orange um, where the how can I describe this I probably don't need to but I'm going to give it a go let's say you had a piece of sellotape wait this is bad no nope, I'm going with it and you poured red glitter on it and then you poured gold glitter on top of the red glitter it's only going to stick the gold is only going to stick to where the red isn't already stuck so it's the same with the pigments which is why we dust the um, color at the top down a little bit but just lightly so that there are some gaps for the yellow to stick which is going to form the blend where you've got a bit of both colors yeah be all all right with that uh, okay, so I've done that and then before doing anything else, I did the same again. So just on top of what we've already done, I just did exactly the same, but just with a little more pressure. Um, and then I'm dusting off. That's that. And we have this gorgeous, seamless, beautiful ombre um, out of these pigments. I'm, I'm mind is blown. I mean, I've seen it done before. I know it's a thing. I just haven't really done it before. Um I sort of like to work with gel, uh, but I'm really impressed with how these pigments blended. Um, so I have uh, haven't topped the pigments, so I'm doing some hairy, scary lines on top of the pigment that can't go wrong, and I can only do them once because I can't wipe them. And we're going to do a cobweb on on here, but I'm not having all of these lines come from one point. And um, you see how there's a little gap either side of the center line um, they're not even uh, oh sorry every bloody oh shit I'm gonna spill my drink oh oh lord it's all happening over here alarms going off drinks being spilled <laughs> hang on okay so there's little gaps between each of the lines we're gonna do that all the way around and then I will cure again uh, just to be safe I don't know, so I don't smudge them and then we're going to do some more U shapes in between them but I will before we do um, before we paint on top of the coming up ombres I do top the ombre so you could do that I just thought oh I'm going to do that in all the sections I just thought I don't want to matte top them and then matte top them again at the end because I don't want them to be double matte but then I got to a point where I thought I'm there's no way I'm going to get this first time so I did matte top them before painting and it was fine so I would recommend doing that so you don't have the stress of um you know one only one attempt at doing straight lines for your cobwebs uh, so we have matte topped that now and we're adding some more of the macart rhinestone glue and these uh, crystal prey crystals look at that big one it's so cool um, and we're going to use some of the orange and the sort of ready orange there's orange orange and red orange and we're going to plonk those around i did keep having to add um, a bit more of the rhinestone glue because i didn't have enough on there and now, now we have some horribly edited caviar bead placement, which is just around at the side of each of the crystals. And look at that! I did that! I made that crystal pattern! Who the f*** am I? I love it! So that's that one. We cured it and we're good to go. And now we have more talking, I'm afraid. Sorry. Um, we're doing the perfect white 
and I'm almost dry brushing here. There's hardly any product on the brush. But look how opaque that is, bananas. I did do two coats though. And we're going to do another, am I getting a bit excitable? I'm sorry. We're going to do another ombre. It's just, I don't watch nail videos, but the random times I do, most of the ones, they're people sort of talking calmly and everything's, you know, happening at the right pace. Whereas I feel like I'm constantly having to, I'm running behind um, and I'm being a bit like, Bruh! but that's just me, I guess. So we're doing this ombre and then we are going to do it again. So I between, before I brushed that yellow down to sort of fade it downwards, I, I wiped the brush on a dry, not a wet, a dry lint-free wipe um, and gave the brush a bit of a tap just to get the, you know, just to get the, the, the dust off and brush that down and now we're doing a second coat of the pigments uh, just on top of the ones which again they're not going to stick that much but you can put more pressure on them and I think it does kind of give a bit more saturation so that is that and it's so quick and easy bananas I love it I might have to get their other palettes and now we are matte topping before moving on to the next step because um, I don't trust myself, which was a good thing to do because I did it up and wipe it and start again. Uh, but where I where I um, top coated, I think you have to float the top coat, meaning make sure there is product between the nail and the bristles of the brush at all times without dragging the brush bristles on the nail. Because you see at the very top where I've pulled the pigment a bit. And you can see the white polish underneath. So you definitely want to float when you're topping the pigments. Um, and we're going to do a triangle. But like a, a, a creepy triangle. <laughs> it's creepy. And then we're going to come in two lines. Sort of coming inwards. And then across. And we're going to do a haunted house. I just googled haunted house silhouette and uh, we're going from there now I have sped this up because oh my lord I paint so slowly and at half the speed it's it's normal um so yeah triangles for the roofs and then we're coming inwards because haunted houses are all like twisted and creepy and out of shape aren't they so it doesn't matter if it's perfectly symmetrical at all it's probably better if it's not and then we've got a big uh upside down u i think the thing with haunted houses is get some triangles on for for roofs bring the um go from the inside of the roof bring the lines inwards and then you can just keep doing that everywhere and the fill in around it um, so you want as many windows as possible because otherwise you're just going to have a lot of black. So we stuck a window in the middle, a round one, um, and then that U shape at the bottom or the upside down U, that's going to be a, a window or a door. No, it's not. It's definitely a window um, because I did first do this higher up on the nail but didn't know how to finish the bottom of the house without it just being plonked in the middle of the nail. So I brought it down a bit. So we've got turrets and then the middle of the house. It's just like a big square, a big black square with turrets coming off it. But you don't want the square to be fully filled in because otherwise you've just got a big, sorry, <laughs> bing, black blob. So put in as many windows as you can. And our ombre in the background is the light glowing through the windows yeah um i was just about to say something about this and it's gone so let's see if a, a little a little wet a wet of a whistle will help no nope, can't remember um but i'm going to on the sides here i'm going to add some more turrets because i did try and do a path as if that um u-shape was a door but it didn't look right. So we're going to add some turrets either side. Oh, and then I add some, um, 
I add some sort of vents. These these things. What are these? Spooky houses seem to have those. I don't know what they are though. Some kind of air. Maybe is it is it the air vent for the tumble? You know, ghosts have got to wash their clothes too. They've got to dry their clothes. So maybe it's just a, a, an air vent for the tumble. I don't know. Uh, we'll put a cross on top. Just because at Halloween, crosses are creepy. Not creepy the rest of the year. Uh, but we're going to add some more turrets here. So little triangles. And then we'll bring the side inwards. So it's kind of creaky, crick, rickety, rickety old shack. Um, and then we'll add some windows. If you get the windows on first, then you can, uh, you know, so you know where you want to put your black bits. Um, and we'll just do the same on the other side. So now it's the top of a, a haunted house. I think as long as you start with a turret or like three turrets, or maybe I should have had one of the turrets coming out like the tumble dry event and then a triangle on top with a window. But as long as you get some turrets on and then plonk a bunch of windows and just fill in black everywhere else, you can have it look however you however you like. But googling haunted house silhouette was a good start, good place to start. Oh, oh, they've got two tumble dryers. These people, fancy. Um, and then we will cure. Oh no, we won't. We're going to add a moon and some stars. So a C and then another C inside of that C and then fill it in and then we'll go from the points from the ends the top and the bottom can I think of another way to say the ends and we'll wisp them out a bit to create a crescent moon do you know what was just on this is totally off subject um accidentally saw the first minute of a football match England versus Australia, I think it was. Oh my word. We're going to do some stars now. Dot stars. Pull up, up itty up, down itty down, left itty left and right itty right. Cure. Then we're going to use some gem gel and add some of those silver crystals in it, which is my new thing now. All black stars are going to have these silver crystals in because it looks amazing. Um, I was going to have a moan about football because me 32 i say 32 seconds 32 seconds people into the game someone was grabbing some body part acting as if they were i've had sneezes that have lasted longer than 32 seconds those with extreme severe hay fever will understand those sneezes where that that point between taking a breath and the actual sneeze Lasts about an hour and a half. 32 seconds, someone's grabbing something, saying, like crying in pain, writhing around on the floor. They show the action replay. Nothing happened. Nobody touched him. I think his elbow grazed somebody else's forearm. And do you know what annoys me the most, apart from just football in, in general, is... They know that there's slow action replay, movie replay action slow-mo. So how pretty is that? So pretty. Yay. So why are they doing this? You're paid hundreds of thousands of pounds a week. Just play the game. Cry, rolling around on the floor. Cry, just, oh. I'm sorry, Ali, if you're watching. I know you love football, but it's f***ing pathetic. Um... And uh, that's what happened when Joe accidentally saw 32 seconds of a football game. Um, turned off shortly after. <sighs> Let's do a... <laughs> Such a grumpy old man. Um, let's do a little graveyard scene. So we're going to do a wiggly line at the bottom and fill it in. Wiggle it however you like. Doesn't have to look like this wiggle. Just a wiggle. And then we're going to do a V. And then I don't really know what's going on here. <laughs> I was making a gravestone. But it kind of looks more like I've done a coffin. I don't know what was going on in my head. I was watching a film. Um, <laughs> and uh, obviously wasn't paying much attention because I've kind of done a coffin sticking out of the ground with little handles on either side. 
Um, but why not? I'm sure there's a gravestone somewhere that looks like that. And then we will add a more classic gravestone when I came to my senses. Um, and we just do a big U shape. I'm really sorry. I just went on on a rant about football. I just don't get it. You know, stop f***ing around. Play the f***ing game. Stop pretending you're hurt. You know, strap on a pair of boobs and do your job. Anyway, I'm in pain 99% of the time I'm with clients. Do I cry about it? I mean, sometimes, but that's actual real pain. Anyway, um, U-shape gravestone. I'm glad this is happening like 25 minutes in because it's only the people who, who like me that are still here. <laughs> Um, and now we're just going to do a bit of it, just a hint of a, a hint of a grave. <laughs> Sounds like a really dark perfume. Hint of death. Uh, undertones of underworld. <laughs> um, just a bit of a grave on the side. And we'll add some crosses to the top. Um, and then we're going to do some some grassy bits. I feel like I've not been helpful at all. In this video um, please accept my sincerest apologies if you have any questions do ask and I will endeavor to um, provide a helpful answer now we're just wisping just wisps when you want to wisp if something is thinner at the top like these wispy grass things don't start the wisp from the top start the wisp from the bottom Wherever the thickest part is, that's where you want to start from. Because as you wisp off, the stroke is going to be thinner. And now we have a bat. So we're doing a V. It's like a cross between a heart and a V. And then from halfway on the side of that, we're going to come out and up. Out and up. Every time I draw a bat, I do it a different way. Out and up either side. And then from the top of those outy up bits, we're going to come down at an angle. And then in this wing, we're going to do two little lines, just like that. Doop, doop, one, two, either side. And then each of those, we're going to join with little curves, the same way we do the curves in the cobweb. And then we can adjust our pointy bits on the bottom side of the wing. Bottom side? Bottom, it's not the side, is it? You have top side and bottom side? That doesn't make sense. Uh, the bottom bit, we can adjust those if we, if we need to. And that's it, little bat, which my little brother uses as the word for a trump. Little stick, uh, which FYI is, is an F-A-R-T. That's what many people call them over here. As in a trumpet, um... The other thing is just a happy coincidence. <laughs> um, so we're speeding up doing another one here, um, another bat, another trump. <laughs> and then we're going to add some more stars and dots because I just find it very difficult to do a set of nails without dots on. I, I, I promise you, when you're do if dots aren't you know, completely out of, what's the saying? Out of left field? Is that a football? I don't know. If dots aren't completely out the blue for a set, put some in there. 100% makes, them, makes it look more intricate and fiddly. It definitely makes it look like it was more difficult than it actually was. Um, it just adds, and it also adds a kind of, see, now it's more twinkly. It adds a bit of twinkle. Um, so we'll add some dots and then we will... <laughs> We will top coat with matte and then I've no idea if we're done. Are we done? The other, the one we did first that I said I've done another one but mirrored, the crystals, I put the same silvery ones on the cobweb but then I used the orangey red instead of the, no, the reddy orange instead of the orangey orange from that um, crystal parade pumpkin set. Um, which is just an absolutely gorgeous set. And I'm kind of annoyed that I've had to use them, to be honest, because I just want to have them in my possession and never use them. <laughs> so we've added some silver ones 
on there as well. And this is the final set. Um, I feel like maybe I haven't talked about nails much, have I? I must have, surely. Um, but I hope you like this set. I love it in matte. Matte just looks so good because there's, it's, you know, there's no distraction with light lines and shine. And it's just boom. There it is. It just, you can see it. But you can see the ombre on the far left nail is uh, is pretty tragic compared to the one on the right because I it up. Um, but I hope you like them. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to use the codes. I appreciate you being here so, so much. Have a lovely day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.